Hello and welcome to another video and I hope you're all good. Now today we're actually looking at something new for once. My last few videos have been about film photography and older cameras so it's definitely nice to get my hands on a, an actual new piece of kit and that is this. It's the 85mm f1.4 RF mount from Samyang and I've really enjoyed using it and obviously I'll get a little bit more into the details but I've got to do the usual YouTube thing and that is this is a lens that was sent to me by Samyang uh, they gave me the opportunity to try it for a couple of weeks and obviously I'm not going to say no to that I do have to send the lens back and I did say that I would produce some content but it's not paid, it's not endorsed or anything like that it's literally just going to be my thoughts they won't even see the video before it goes out um, so you can make of that what you will but it's not an actual sponsored piece now because it's not sponsored and the channel doesn't get any sponsorship if you would like to help the channel out there's two things that you can do and that is hit the like button below if you enjoy the video and if it's your first time here and you do like it hit the subscribe button that really helps me know that i'm doing the right things and that i should carry on doing these kind of things so i'd appreciate the support now this isn't going to be the most detailed review that you will see about this lens i'd actually suggest that you go to watch dustin abbott's video i'm going to leave a link in the description below to it he's got so much detail about the lenses that are reviews and if i was buying a new lens i'd definitely be going to check his channel out to to see what his thoughts on the lens are um and in fairness i think he enjoyed the lens as well so it's well worth taking a look at um, but i'm just going to give you my main kind of thoughts and feelings about this after using it for a couple of weeks um, so yeah so let's take a look at the details of it so as i say it's an 85 mil f1.4 lens that's native to the rf mount now 85 mm is more of a portrait kind of length it's one of those kind of lengths that you you know you have certain kind of uses for and definitely kind of portrait photographers and maybe studio work and things like that it's going to benefit those kind of photographers now the problem is that i shoot more urban landscapes so i'm generally shooting at maybe 24 mil maybe 35 mil 50 at a push 85 mil is not really something that i would look at but one of the biggest things that i really wanted to try in particular because it's november in the uk and it's a bit dark and gloomy the sun sets at 4 30 in the afternoon one of the biggest benefits was that f 1.4 aperture One of the biggest benefits was that f1.4 aperture and that means that it's going to let in loads of light enable me to shoot faster without having to bump up the iso so hopefully getting cleaner kind of images and that was one of the biggest reasons that i wanted to actually give this lens a go and try it even though the actual focal length probably isn't ideal for the kind of things that i shoot but like I say, still really pleased with some of the images and I'll throw some up on screen. In fact, I was so pleased with some of the images, I've actually already posted some to my Instagram. And again, I'll leave a link to that below. So feel free to go and give me a follow. Um, and I was really happy with the kind of results that I was getting, even though, like I say, it's a little bit of a challenging focal length to use for the kind of things that I shoot. So one of the other major features of this lens is the fact that it's RF mount, which for us, well certainly ESR shooters or ESRP or anyone in the Canon R range, I think it's fantastic to see third party lenses coming to these cameras. Because the one good thing about this is it's definitely more budget friendly than the Canon kind of counterparts. Um, so it's a great bonus to see these lenses actually coming to the RF mount. So one of the first things I wanted to take a look at was the build quality and I've been really impressed with the build quality. It's a metal lens, it doesn't feel too plasticky or anything like that and it's got a really good weight to it as well which is important when you're shooting on a mirrorless camera that you're getting the balance of the camera right. If it's too front heavy it's a little bit awkward to shoot with, if it's too light it feels like you've got nothing there and it, don't know, it almost feels a little bit counterintuitive if it's too light. Um, but this is a really nicely balanced lens for this camera um, now obviously being an 85mm f1.4 you're going to have quite a large piece of glass on the front element which you definitely do so you 
will need to check out, check out the filter thread size if you commonly use in filters. Um, but in fairness, I've been really impressed with the build quality. Feels good in the hand, and I really like the way that it looks. It looks like a you know professional piece of kit. Now it isn't important what it looks like; it's more whether it does a job. But it's always nice when a, a lens is good looking, and you know it does a good job as well. So yeah, really impressed with the build quality. So one of the major concerns I had when I first started to use the lens and when I was first invited to use the lens was whether the autofocus would be any good. Now being a third party lens, you're never quite gonna be sure whether it will you know, even do a good job of focusing, let alone how it would compare to native RF lenses from Canon. And I've gotta say that I was actually quite impressed. It works pretty well. Now it's never gonna be as fast as Canon glass themselves and I think that's perfectly acceptable, uh, but I was a little bit concerned over whether, you know, whether it'd be as quick or slower than EF lenses that have been adapted onto RF bodies and I'm happy to say that I think it's faster than adapted glass it certainly feels like it's doing a good job now I don't think it's as fast as native lenses as Canon lenses themselves um, but again I think you're not really going to struggle. Now I shoot a lot more static objects and things and even with portraiture unless the, the person's running around in circles you're still going to be able to get some really good focus and not miss focus too much. I'm also pleased to say that the eye autofocus does work with this lens. You know you've got no issues there so as long as the camera's doing the heavy lifting and you know that it's in focus you're pretty much golden with it. Now I did miss a few shots, I'm not going to lie, and there were a few times when the, the focus would hunt, but again, I think a lot of the time, you'll know the kind of things that you're shooting, you'll know whether you think that's going to be an issue to you. I definitely didn't find it an issue, and was quite impressed with how snappy the autofocus was, but if focus is absolutely critical to you and it's got to be spot on every single time you might just want to have a, a play with it first whether you get the opportunity to try one or send it back or whatever you need to do um, but I think you'd be really surprised at how good the autofocus is I didn't have any major issues with it and perfectly usable for the kind of things that I shoot and I'm sure the vast majority of us so pretty good pretty impressed with that How did I find the sharpness with the lens? Again, I think it was really impressive. Um, I love the images that have come out of it. There's a little bit of a vignette to the lens, which you'd imagine from you know an 85mm like this, which is perfectly kind of fixable in Lightroom or whatever apps you're using. Um, in terms of sharpness itself, again, very, very pleased with it. There's definitely a sweet spot around kind of f5.6, f8 um, that you know you're going to get that with most lenses the the more that you shoot wide open with this so if you're shooting at f1.4 all the time you will notice some softness to the images there's no doubt about that but overall i'm pretty impressed with how sharp it was it does kind of fall off towards the edges a little bit but again for the vast majority of us that's perfectly acceptable and doesn't detract from the image too much um, I've been really pleased though with the results and like I say so much so that I'm quite happy to post them to social media put them in my portfolio um, so definitely nothing that would put me off with this lens So one of the biggest benefits of using a lens like this is that aperture, that f1.4, which is great for kind of any kind of low light photography and certainly for those of you looking to shoot things like weddings, whenever you get the opportunity to do that again. Um, I think it's great having that ability to suck in all of that light and not have to rely on kind of, you know, bumping up the ISO and things like that. Um, I was really pleased to go and like shoot this uh, lens on the streets of a night time and think I still got some great results with it so I really benefited from using like faster glass um, in that kind of scenario but also one of the huge benefits with this is the bucker that it produces so the out of focus areas now for portrait photographers this is generally pretty kind of crucial to it and we when you're shooting a lens this fast You've got a lot of opportunity to not just get the blurry background, to get the bucker in the background, but also be able to get some um, foreground kind of shallow depth of field as well. So you're able to create some kind of really dreamy images and, you know, depending on the, the kind of distance that you put in between yourself, 
the between the foreground, the subject, and the background, you're going to be able to get some really nice separation. So, like I say, you'll be able to lose the foreground, keep the subject sharp, and then have the background fall out of focus as well. And it creates like really nice images. And as you'll see from the, the car shoot that I did, it was just fantastic to be able to, you know, take advantage of that fast f1.4 uh, and really kind of, you know, isolate the subject. So fantastic that it is as fast as it is. So a couple of the other benefits with this that, you know, really kind of opened my eyes to, to these kind of lenses is the fact that native RF lenses like this at a good price point, like 500 pounds, really opens up the EOS R system and the RP to other kind of say amateur photographers or maybe people that are just looking to step up from their first camera really makes it a lot more affordable considering that a lot of the native RF lenses from Canon are going to cost you at least £2,000 that kind of price range and upwards I think having the option to look at third party lenses in this kind of price bracket means that these RF lens, uh, RF mount cameras become a lot more accessible to a lot more photographers and that really can't be a bad thing. So what are my kind of final thoughts on the lens? Um, to be honest, I've been hugely impressed by it, but I'll start with the, the, the negatives. And I really don't think it has many negatives. I'm gonna be kind of like as harsh as I can be with it. And that is that I don't think the autofocus is the fastest by any means, but it's certainly not bad. It's definitely not gonna be anything that I think would cause an issue to most photographers. And I really am kind of clutching at straws to try and find the negative with it because I think everything else it does incredibly well. So the f1.4 aperture is brilliant. It's so useful in loads of different scenarios. So I love how fast that is. The 85mm focal length, again, it's not really a focal length that I would use too much myself, but I can definitely see the benefit for other photographers. And I would love to be able to have that in my bag, just knowing that it's there. Um, the build quality is excellent, really impressed with the build quality and obviously one of the biggest bonuses to this lens is the price. At around about £500 I think it's an absolute bargain and I really don't think that the, you know, the vast majority of people would be disappointed with a lens like this. Um, I think if it was really clutching at straws it's slightly prone to lens flare but again Sam Yang of Thought Ahead, they'll send you the, the actual lens hood with it, which is fantastic. It's another item that you don't need to purchase. And unless you're shooting directly into sunlight on a daily basis, I don't think it's going to cause you too many issues anyway. Um, again, even with things like the vignette and slightly softer when it's wide open, I think when you consider the value of this, when you consider the actual price, I think they're all really small kind of like, you know, only tiny minor issues. I think the vast majority of the time you're going to be really pleased with the images that you produce. They're going to be good, sharp images with really well rendered bokeh, um, really appealing images to look at and actually quite enjoyable to use. So I've really got no issues with this lens and I hope that you would enjoy it if you do pick one up. So they're my thoughts on the Samyang 85mm f1.4 RF lens and again if you do end up trying this lens I'd love to know your thoughts and feelings so please do leave a comment below. If it's something that you're looking to pick up yourself or if you're considering this or maybe some other lenses again leave a comment below I'd love to know what you think about this this kind of lens and obviously I'm looking to do more reviews on subjects like this in the future so do consider subscribing if you've liked it and obviously hit the like button that would really help out the channel as well so I appreciate any positivity like that so again hope you're good hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you in another one soon cheers <laughs>